Hey YouTube, what's going on? Today we have a quick video on an item that I want to show off because it's part of my collection, but I'm going to be parting with it pretty soon. Um, it's relevant because we have a new offering into the franchise coming out very, very soon. They're going to be debuting some more stuff at Comic-Con and then releasing, I believe, the DVD in August. So let's take a quick look. Behold, my stuff. Okay, so what we have here is a mask from Babylon 5. Now, you guys have seen my channel. I did a video once before. I'm pretty big on Babylon 5, and I generally fabricate most of my Babylon 5 material. But they did release a few official pieces of merchandise for Babylon 5 back in the day. Babylon 5, in my opinion, is the best sci-fi show ever made. It suffered through a series of cancellations and re-pickups. It was syndicated, and then it bounced around to various channels. It went in, in my uh, country and state. It went from what was known then was UPN9 to um, Sci-Fi Channel before it was S-Y-F-I. It was actually spelled S-C-I-F-I, Sci-Fi. Then it went and bounced over to Warner Brothers and they ran it on TNT. And under TNT, it ran all five seasons and got four additional movies, one spinoff series called Crusade, and one pilot for another one called Law Tales of the Rangers or something like that. Uh, I have it all on DVD. So they eventually, about 10 years after Babylon 5 ended, made a three-episode, I want to say, mini uh, DVD set called The Lost Tales, which took place in real time 10 years later. And now they're coming out with an animated movie with the surviving cast, and that is, I believe, uh, you know, Voyage Home or something like that. I, I really haven't memorized the title yet. I'm actually trying to stay away from it so I can go in completely clean. But the style of animation is very much in line with like what you've seen with like What If and, and things like that. So... Um, I'm really excited to get more Babylon 5, especially with the original actors involved. Not all the actors are with us anymore. In fact, quite a few are gone. One of my favorite actors on the show was Andreas Katsoulis, and he played Jakar. Great character there from the pilot episode all the way to the last episode, and even in the final pilot they did for uh, Tales of the Rangers and whatnot. So this is a latex mask of a Narn, and it's supposed to be Jakar. Um, but it, it's really a generic Narn. If anything, it looks a little bit more like, uh, like Sheridan's bodyguard than it does actually look like Jakar. But the Narns were a very makeup-heavy, uh, species. And, uh, Michael Westmore did all the makeup for Babylon 5. You should know who that is. And so I was really into the evolution. It changed way more than, like, Worf and Klingons did throughout Star Trek. Um, Jakar evolved every single season. His coloring, his molds, just the way he was presented, um, and it's a really, really great, uh, it's a great evolution, and so the mask is latex, and it's all one piece, it's painted, the eye holes, I mean, they literally gave very, very little of your own face to show through with this, uh, the nose should be a little bit more pronounced, the brow should be heavier, but again, this is just a mask, now they show some masks and products in the episode where Babylon 5 gets a gift shop and different people are wearing different funny masks and things like that. I don't think these were in the background or anything, but it was right around the same time these came out. So it's got the tag, the original tag. How cool is that? Now, normally I wouldn't be into stuff like that, but if you watch, I don't know, CB Studios, you'll know he's very big on collecting uh, the Scream mask with the tag, the ghost face mask with the tag. So this one has a tag. And so it has the original logo for the show. Uh, it has the deluxe latex headpiece. It has the rubies insignia. It's got the little pull tabs on it. And around the back, this is a sticker. This is not printed on it. It says Jakar Mask. It has an item number and a barcode. And it has the uh, Warner Brothers trademark on it from 1995. And of course, with rubies, it's made in Mexico. So very rare to have this on a card. Now, I've had this for a while, and I had thought about maybe displaying it or um, making a Jakar cosplay, uh, even making the book of Jakar, and ultimately, I just don't have the room or the time to do it. I really have to focus my collection and my display to pretty much Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Evil Dead, <laughs> and I really don't have a lot of space for everything else. So where I do want to keep some of my Babylon 5 items that I've worked on over the years, I can't keep them all. And some of them are going to have to go. So I am going to have to part with this in the Babylon 5 groups. I'm sure somebody will be very happy to have a fully completed, no degradation Jakar mask. 
hopefully they'll take good care of it. It's got that classic half split up the back that Ruby's does so that you can get it on your head, but it is a very uh, thin mask compared to most heavy masks. Like my Gollum mask is much thicker than this. And so it's very elastic. And so you can get it on your dome pretty easily. I'm not going to put it on because I don't want to have to clean it again. But Babylon 5 is absolutely one of the best sci-fi shows ever, regardless of whether you think it's the best or not. If you're a sci-fi fan, there's no way you won't like it. Some people have given um, crap about the bad CGI. Well, the thing was made way, you know, early 90s. And so CGI was new. And that was about as good as it got back then. But it was the only way to really show off the, the space battles. And what they did became the precursor for what every science fiction show did after that. You know, new Battlestar Galactica doesn't happen without Babylon 5. The other thing was the music and the score was handled much like a, a cinema piece rather than a, a TV show. And where it started off, the show wanted to be very serial. It ended up being a five-year arc where things that happened in season one affect what happened in season five and things that are teased in season one and two pay off in season four and five. So it was the first sci-fi show to really do that. The big debate was always that Michael J. Uh, Straczynski, or JMS, excuse me, J. Michael Straczynski, which J is for John, um, took his pitch to Paramount. They said, no, we don't want it. Then they wrote Babylon. They took Babylon 5 and wrote Deep Space Nine. Babylon 5 is the story of a space station near a wormhole uh, surrounding a planet in which the leader of the station becomes kind of a religious figure and has to lead a revolution against the great war of aliens. Sound familiar? <laughs> so the debate was always DS9 versus Babylon 5. The thing that builds on the Star Trek canon and stands on its shoulders to try to be a little better versus this original concept which doesn't have any legs at all and is completely doing it from scratch. I always felt the writing was what the difference was. I liked the writing in Babylon 5. JMS is one of my favorite writers. So, I really got behind that. I also really love the acting in both. I'm a Deep Space Nine fan, but in my opinion, when you look at Londo, and you look at Jakar, and you look at, in particular, the the commander from season one, who I love, uh, you know, the character of Jeffrey Sinclair, character Delenn. Delenn is one of the best written female characters in science fiction. Uh, she also has some of the best lines, and a lot of people have great lines, but Garibaldi, the, the trope of the, the cocky sort of, you know, security guard with an attitude, that's all from Babylon 5. So if you haven't seen it, I believe it's on Tubi for free right now. Uh, it's very 90s, but if you're into that, I would highly recommend checking it out. They are going to have the new uh, animated movie coming out, which sort of has John Sheridan, who is played by Tron, uh, you know, Bruce Boxleitner jumping through time and sort of seeing the different eras of Babylon 5 and stuff. It's purely service for the fans. It's not something I would recommend getting into the series with. Go back and watch it. It's really good. It's five seasons, real seasons, not these short 10 episode crap seasons, like 24 one hour episodes. Back in the day, we had real seasons uh, on television. So highly recommend checking it out. Do so if you feel so inclined. But the Jakar mask is very hard to find, very hard to find intact. Uh, and it's almost impossible to find carded. So really kind of a, been a cool little piece of my Babylon 5 collection. But since so much of my Babylon 5 collection is handmade at this point, I just don't know that this um, will stay with me because I don't have all the other masks with cards and things like that. And I've often used the other masks to turn and convert uh, into other cosplay pieces like my Mimbari headpiece and things like that. So uh, I think I'm going to have to part ways with Jakar. But... I wanted to do a video on it and show it off because it was one of the rarer finds I was able to pick up and they don't show up very often, even if you know what to look for, uh, they hide. And Babylon 5 fans tend to keep their collections and those who don't keep them well, they rot and disappear. So I hope that somebody will really be looking for this and want this and it can move into their collection. But always very really cool to go over a nice vintage mask from the 90s, which was the heyday of latex mask. Everybody and their brother had a costume latex mask back in the day. Uh, everybody would go to Party City uh, and, and or whatever and just sort of get, during Halloween season, Just the, they just had a row on the top shelf of masks through all, above all the costumes. It was just head, head form after head form after head form of masks. And so Ruby's was the one. That was the company that made everything that we got, um, you know, before Trick or Treat Studios and things like that. It was all Ruby's. So, yeah. So, really nice uh, adult-sized Jakar Narn mask from Babylon 5, carded rubies and thank you guys for checking this out 
just one of these random videos where I was like, I'm going to, before I get rid of it, I want to highlight that I had it so I could go back in the day and remember that I actually had this at one point. So to my Babylon 5 fans, I hope you enjoy the Jakar mask when I put it up. Thank you guys for checking this out. Keep posted on this channel. Um, if you feel so inclined, you may gingerly touch the tip of the like button or the subscribe button. Uh, I have a lot of different props coming down the pipe. Uh, I hope to be doing some Indiana Jones stuff in lo of Dial of Destiny having just come out, so I'll revisit some of the props that I still have from Indiana Jones. I've made and sold several over the years. Uh, I don't keep a ton for myself, but I've decided to make a little space in my LucasArts Center for Willow, Star Wars, and Indy. So I'm going to repopulate some of my Indy stuff. And uh, as usual, there'll be some Star Wars stuff. So uh, you guys have seen my, my Vader is evolving. I built the mask. I really am enjoying where that's going. I have the EFX helmet coming, so I will be doing a video on that. And of course, there'll be some Evil Dead stuff. Uh, as you guys know, I just recently did um, one of Nick Valenza's, Nick Sawmart's uh, evil, evil ash hands here, the, the dead hand. So um, this was one that he had sent me and I painted up myself. Uh, Brett's Groovy Chainsaw has also painted one up. I'm sure he'll have a video on that in the near future. Uh, if not, you can check it out in the Ghost Beaters and the Knights of Samaria uh, Facebook groups. But this was just a fun little foam hand that, you know, I've kind of been having fun with. And uh, I have one that has armature in it. I have a resin one, and I have one giving the finger. So I'm going to paint all those up, too. So there'll be some Evil Dead stuff, but that's mostly going to be in the Knights of Samaria. So if you want to see that kind of stuff, do subscribe here. I will do videos on the finished products uh, and maybe some DIYs. But check out the Knights of Samaria for the full amount of content of Evil Dead. And uh, now it's time for me to make some Necronomicons. So thanks for checking out uh, the channel, guys. And remember, if you can't uh, buy it, build it. If you can't build it, buy it. Sometimes it pays to do both. But every once in a while, buying it.